Now, um, this is the second group of scholars. The, the first group, they basically say that, look, you cannot make haram something that technically fits the, the criterion of marriage. And the bare minimum criterion are met. You have the ijab, you have the qabul, you have the acceptance and the proposal being, uh, you have the offer and the proposal, uh, you have uh, the wali, you have the mahr, you have the two witnesses. And they said, if the two of them agree to any conditions that are halal in and of themselves, who are we to get in between two people that want to get married? And it is up to the two partners. If the lady, for example, wants to give up her rights and wants to take on some potential harm, well then that's her prerogative. It's not our job to tell her we can advise her, but we cannot force her to give up her right. Indeed, our Prophet wasallam said, the most important conditions to fulfill are the conditions that allow the private parts to be halal, i.e. the nikah to take place. And he said, the Muslim honors his conditions. So if those are the conditions, so be it. And they also say that if such an agreement took place in the middle of the marriage, spontaneously, by unanimous consensus, it would be halal. So why are you, are you making it haram if it takes place in the beginning of the marriage? 